What if Link's Awakening had a whisper? That was my entire idea for starting my newest game project. See, I'm trying to improve my skills in game dev by trying to work my way through different game genres in gaming history. Martian Red, which I actually released earlier this year, and you can go play on it right now, was my homage to 2D mascot platformers of the olden days. And now I've come to a genre very near and dear to my heart, which is the top-down action game. Or simply all the old Legend of Zelda games that I grew up with, and the one that I held most dear being Link's Awakening on the Game Boy. I am hoping to recapture a similar feeling of exploration and accomplishment that I felt when I first played Link's Awakening all those years ago. So for my game, the first thing I did was open up a whiteboard and plan out what I wanted all the mechanics to be, a simple overview of how I wanted the story to play out, and a rough description of what the main character would look like. For the mechanics, I settled with obviously getting the player to start using the Vespa right away, but then I wanted them to be able to acquire abilities for their Vespa over the course of the game. Now I do want to keep this game short since I'm hoping to get it done within the next month or so, so I only picked two abilities to add in. One being a rocket boost when you hold down a certain button, and another being the ability to jump. I'm probably going to explain that one in universe using some kind of hydraulics. I don't actually know how vehicles work, to be honest. From the story, I'm taking a lot of inspirations from Link's Awakening as well. So like how in the beginning of Link's Awakening, Link is on a boat and gets shipwrecked due to a thunderstorm. So I'm thinking our character is on a highway and falls off into a small town below. So the whole goal is to be able to get back on the highway while maybe also helping these small towns folk along the way. And as for the main character, well that's actually the first thing I got done for the game. Now I definitely don't recommend starting with art, especially if art isn't your strong suit. However, I was just really excited to get this beanie wearing little dude on the screen as quickly as possible. You can definitely see the parallels in the way I drew him, but I did want him to be his own little guy with a beanie and leather jacket and some jeans. Next, I got him in the game and got him moving. But obviously the game isn't just about a little guy moving around, it's about him riding a Vespa. So the next thing I needed was to actually get the Vespa in and working. And I have to admit, my pixel art skills are not great. So actually drawing up the Vespa sprites took me quite a bit of time, a bunch of references, but once it was done, it was simply a matter of getting it in, making sure our little guy could actually get on top of it and ride around. So at this point, I had very basic functionality, but before I proceed with the rest of the game, I wanted to make sure I could code in all the power-ups so I don't get too far into the game dev and then have to change things because because I can't figure something out. So the next thing I wanted to code in was a jump. Now the way jumping happens in a top-down game like Link's Awakening is that the image of the character just kind of moves up on the 2D screen and this little shadow appears below them to make them appear like they are jumping since it is still a 2D game. So that's kind of what I did. Shout out to this 2D melon throwing tutorial that helped me out immensely with that. The problem however was that I needed to make sure that when the character is in the air they can't actually collide with things that would normally be on the ground and this led me to exploring layer masks in Unity for the first time. So basically I can assign a layer to be the jump layer and then when the character is in the jump animation I can make sure that they are set to be in the jump layer while everything else can be on a different layer and then just tell all the colliders on the player character to ignore that layer while in the jump layer. So jumping was now finally in. Now I also wanted to make something the player actually would need to jump over so I created the first obstacle in the game being these little holes in the ground. Something I always found really funny and cute in the 2D Zelda games was when Link would just fall into holes and have this screaming falling animation. And I definitely needed to have that in my game too. So I created a hole sprite and made it so the player comes in contact with it, they go into a very similarly funny falling animation. Now really the only thing that I needed to get in was the rocket boost. So similarly to exploring layer masks for the first time, this is the first game I'm making where I'm actually utilizing Unity's input system package, which makes it so you can just have one player where you can define all the different types of actions you want the player to be able to do and then you can actually add or change how they would do it on a keyboard or a controller or even a touchscreen without actually having to change any actual code to read different types of input. So with the rocket boost I wanted it specifically so the player would have to hold down a button for the rocket boost to activate kind of like running boots in Zelda where you hold down a button and after a delay Link gets a speed boost in a direction. The input system package actually made this really easy since you can actually 
clearly define how interactions function in the input package. So I can just set the boost interaction to be a hold interaction. And that let me decide what I wanted to happen when the player starts holding the button. So at this point, I could just play a loading up animation. Then I can decide what happens when a player has held the button for a set duration. So this is when I apply the speed boost. And then what happens when the player stops holding? And this is when I simply remove the speed boost. I will say learning about the input system package definitely made this a lot easier since it worked right out the box with both my keyboard and my controller. So with that, now I have all the mechanics for the player sorted out. So in future updates, I can actually start putting the world and the game together. I am really excited to see where this project goes and I hope you are too. I am still very much a beginner developer as you guys can probably tell, but I am so excited to learn about all these cool things while sharing them with you guys as well. And I hope I can take you all along with me on this cool dev journey. So if you enjoyed what you just saw, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you later. Bye.